Hello, and welcome back to the Impression Wiz channel. I'm your host, the Impression Wiz. And you know what we're getting to here. We have only three episodes of the whole main series. Maybe not even three. Maybe more than three. Uh, Dirk is kind of unpredictable. So, uh, we'll find out. But, uh, yeah, we're on Dirk's route. Uh, <laughs> and it probably will be the end of the series unless you want me to go back and do any uh, catching up on things or if there's any secret endings you want me to find but uh, for right now let's get to the main attraction you've come a long way you've made a lot of friends and managed to keep them all. You're helping them grow, and you're growing alongside them while also entrenching yourself in some ridiculous nonsense along the way. Living, laughing, loving, shitting, and farting. Okay. As, as is right and in balance. You think so, anyway. You're still on the lookout for any specific bits of meaning to help nail down your sense of purpose as it careens every which way according to the whims of friendship and fancy. There is a natural flow to all this. Trolls in sets of 12, give or take since some come in pairs, as you think back to your first round of friends, kids in sets of 4 you've had time to realize more about the Earths you've been hopping between. A kid on one is an adult on the other. It's been weirdly revealing seeing multiple versions of your friends. Not that you seem to be bound by any of the same rules that they are. It's just that as someone whose self has been scattered to the winds of time, regathered thanks to Aradia, and is still not fully stable, it's kind of nice to see that it's not just you out there trying different shit out, self-wise. When you think about the last friend left to visit in this set, you can't help but feel a bit guilty. With everything Jake told you about him, and from what you know of Dave's bro, you're not exactly meeting him with a clean slate. You haven't let anyone else complicate personality traits. Let me reread that one. You haven't let anyone else's complicated personality traits hold you back from finding a way to befriend them. Though, and you're not about to start now. You'll find a way to make it work. God, isn't it fun having such a complicated and nuanced tangle of interpersonal relationships with your friend group? Isn't it such a delightful challenge? Anyway, the point is, it's time to go meet Dirk. So you go. You don't know much about where he lives, except that it's in the future, like Roxy minus chess guys. You zap on over to what what should almost definitely be the perfect distance from his door. There's a moment where you are weightless, suspended in midair like the cartoon Coyote Man, whose name you cannot remember because suddenly you are plummeting downwards and that takes all of your attention. From what you can see, it flashes as you spin over head over heel. And thing the thing you are rapidly approaching is the ocean. Before you achieve game fucking over before you even begin, you stall yourself with a zap in and out of reality, appearing just a few inches above the water. You land with a delicate splash. Now that the imminent threat of death has passed, you look up. Metal rises up from the water in a towering scaffolding. 
Dirk must live in the building up there. God damn it! <laughs> yeah, that's Dirk's house in a nutshell. Well, no. <laughs> you haul yourself up onto the jaunty platform at the corner of the scaffolding, a few above water rungs upward, and get your shit together. It's not much to look at. You probably wouldn't even be able to spot it from a distance, but it'll do. In a minute, you can pop back up to the top floor, but you should ring yourself out first. There's a chair, which is weird. You sit in it. That was slick fucking trick. <laughs> Let me get into this voice, because he's going to be... Ugh, it's going to be an interesting one. That was a slick fucking trick. Not the stealing my seat bit, though. I do respect your presumptuous ass placement choice, too. I mean, the entrance. Nice save. You whirl around, but there's no one there. Aside from the endless ocean, the only shit in sight is the stuff on the platform. Which, now that you are considering it, Kind of reminds you of one of those outdoor man caves you sometimes see at rich people's houses. I already know who that was. <laughs> but we'll get to it. The kind where you don't know enough about electricity to get why rain just doesn't fuck the whole thing up. Except instead of like a grill and a TV and an ashtray with an old cigar in it, it's a few screens, a keyboard, a turntable and speaker, a couple of hoverboard-looking things, and some complicated aquatic equipment. Both situations contain a mini-fridge. Dirk, you say his name and hope he shows up. After Roxy, you really thought you weren't going to be bamboozled by another fake-out meeting. But who the fuck knows? Maybe this guy is a ghost. No, that's stupid. The one and only. Where is he? There's no need to get f freaked out about it. I'm just talking through the speakers. Or, more accurately, I'm just sending data through a text-to-speech converter, which is playing through the speakers. This isn't a function I have ever had occasion to dust off, so this is genuinely thrilling. I guess I'm kind of using my own voice for Dirk, but oh well. It'll work. Bear with me. Thank you for trying and failing so miserably to break and enter in pursuit of friendship. Or whatever you're doing. You are doing. Oh, you know. You do your best. Is there a place he'd want to, uh, meet, maybe? So y'all could talk in meet space? <clears throat> That's not exactly my forte. Let's just keep chatting like this for a bit, bro to bro. You can use the computer if the power of my voice is getting to be too much for you. It's almost... It almost is for me, if I'm being honest here. From above, there's a metallic whirring sound. <laughs> Aw, shit. Dad's home. Daddy's home. You look up and Dirk is repelling down the scaffolding at the alarming at an alarming speed. Wait a minute. Yes! Okay, I was right. I was right. Okay. The jig is up, so we might as well wrap this shit up. Dirk swings in, landing with both feet on the platform. He straightens and stares at you, chin up. Well, you think he's staring at you. He's wearing shades, which you expected. It's been real, and don't worry. I won't be far. I never am. Neither Dirk's hands nor his mouth are moving, but his voice is still playing over the speakers. Your smile is nervous and probably too full of teeth. What's going on? So you're the f friendable alien I've heard about. 
I thought for a minute you were all you already ate it. But I see you Peter panned that shit. I'm not imp I'm not unimpressed. He says this is the regular way with his mouth. It should put you at ease, but it does not. Does he not remember talking about that already? <laughs> you tell him it's nice to talk face to face since you thought he didn't want a want to a minute ago when you first met. Oh, that wasn't me. I might just have to do some editing once it finally gets figured out. Oh, you thought, lol, wait, what? It wasn't? No, just you just met a divergently evolved copy of my 13-year-old brain. The use of the speaker system is new, but it makes sense he'd up his game for interfering with relationships I'm busy forging in 3D. I guess I should go ahead and be proud of him for it. Well, damn, okay. You guess you have no reason to believe that it's not possible since... Wait, did he just say relationships? He's been busy forging. Isn't that your whole thing? I was under the impression that you were here to defend me. My friends haven't exactly kept quiet about you. I'm just... I just figured you were saving the best for last. Yeah. Oh, no, that's right. That is your thing. You just thought he might be more of a challenge. Wait. Are you friendship nagging him right now? Is that what's happening? How did it come to this? Well, hold on. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Well then, never mind. Uh, you guess it's working. Might as well roll with it? <laughs> Don't half-ass this one just because I know the gig. I still expect you to friend-woo the shit out of me. Blitz the fuck out of my friendship chakra till I see the universe's heart through its asshole and what have you. Buddy, you've been around the friendship block a time or two. He has no reason to worry. You have full confidence in your ability to show him the friendship time of his life. Oh, trying to do this with a heart player, though, is going to be interesting. But, since I kind of consider myself that anyway, in reality, let's see how this works. <laughs> oh, I'm ready. I have a list of my deepest secrets ready to unload to on you right here, right now, if you think you can take it. He sure is taking, or talking, a big game of preparedness. But you're not sure how true it all is. Every line of muscle in his his body is held an excruciating placidity. You've never seen a jaw so purposefully unclenched. It's almost like he's begging you to call him on it. You do not call him on it. You're not sure how he'd get the idea that you could half-ass this, of all things. You just prove it to him with your deeds. It seems like that might be his love language. With that in mind, you hold your fist out for him to bump. Ah uh, yes, Daps. The universal signal of bro brohood. <sighs> Synchronous across all of, this of space time. I messed that word up, but we're still going. You would be honored to give him his first. The, co mm. the corners of his mouth twitch, not quite a smile. What kind of monster would I have to be to refuse you? You do the thing. Bah! <laughs> If he is having a moment about having touched another person for the first time, he isn't showing it, which is fine. And each at their own pace, right? So now that we've got that handled, what's next on the agenda? Do we leap straight into the heartfelt Q&A, or are we doing an activity first? How does he already know this? <laughs> oh wait, no, he talked it. Okay, I already know him. 
Man, what should you do next? You're not used to your friends giving you the third degree about your process, so you're a little out of step. You can't tell if he's genuinely curious or if he knows he's unbalancing you. Either way, it's intense. Oh, there's so many levels of sarcasm, I don't even know if it's sarcastic anymore. <laughs> or levels of ironic irony. There's so many levels of irony that I'm not even sure it's ironic anymore. I'm still sticking with the sarcasm one, too. You look around for inspiration. Really? Nah, you're not a Coppola dad. You're not a couple of dads. <laughs> Real quick little plug, uh, Dream Dad, if you want to go check that out. <laughs> anyway. Or Dream Daddy, anyway. Oh, the high-tech scuba gear could be cool. The tingle of choice pricks at your neck. I'm not sure if you have the muscu m musculature to hold that up. No offense. I didn't have your literal stick figure proportions in mind when I designed it. And it's built more for looks than weight efficiency. So I don't think you'd last that long in it. You're not missing much, though. It's not particularly thrilling down there anyway. Oh, phew, good point. You can totally see yourself sinking like a stone, flailing your arms in a vain attempt at trying to look cool while swimming, clawing at the metal clasps to free yourself. Zapping out as a last resort, but misjudging distance due to the distracting water in your mouth. It's all going black as you're un you wonder why you didn't learn better when you hung out with Feferi. What? Damn, that was a pretty detailed thought trail. Haha, <laughs> weird. Anyway, you could just hang out at his place instead. The classic option. That works for me. You hold out your hand to zap him alongside you, but he doesn't take it. I'll meet you there. He infle His inflection tilts tilts up and at the end and sounds shaped like a half a question who wants you to con construe the meaning of yourself. What's the alternative? You piggyback ride as he climbs all the way up? He shrugs. Yes, if you're up for it. I, I typically rocket board up, but a uh, grueling climb is as good a way as any to kill a morning. So, either way. You consider your options. As much as you want to see if he actually has it in him to best you up the entire tower, Rocket boarding sounds, uh, indefinitely more fun. Infinitely more fun for everyone. You tell him as much. Hop on, then. Actually, that's actually pretty cool. <laughs> he kicks it into place and fires it up, offering you his hand. You don't have anything to lose but another life, so you take it. Steadily, but fast enough so you have to cling to his shirt for safety, you fly upward. He circles the tower a few times, in no hurry to ta make it to the top. That, or he's showing off. Well, he's probably showing off. You don't think that it... Or, you don't think that's it, but you're still working it out. The confidence in the way his body moves now, the subtle shifts in weight to steer the machine, it all feels genuine, like this is a much more comfortable thing for him than the conversation was. The wind whips your face. There is sea in every direction. You land at the top of the tower, and he waits for you to hop down before doing the same, and then kick flips the rocket board into... Quenchen. Here we are, home sweet home. I hope you're prepared for just how homey this shit is, too. I had nothing but time to flex my massive dick horn muscles. 
Okay, I, I, that's cool, actually. <laughs> and, uh, hi, Cal. Um, good to see ya, buddy. Uh, I'm worried about that already. <laughs> you follow him inside to his room. Like you have with everyone else. It's full of his shit. Like everyone else. Unlike everyone else, he leans against his workbench calm and collected and clearly. With every fiber of his being waiting for your judgment. You wonder if it's weird how you can tell that about him, since it does seem like he's putting a lot of effort into the facade. You aren't sure if he's unpracticed at having an audience, or if you're just extra good at reading people by now. Maybe it's the shades that are messing with you. They're nothing new after Dave, but with Dirk, it's almost like he'd be less penetrable without them. You try and focus on the decor as he clearly wants you to, but do we go... What we got going on? Oh, okay, there are themes of puppets, horses, robots, and musical equipment. It's got the post-ironic whimsy of Dave style, which you figure makes sense considering this universe's Dave had a hand in stocking it, but with a dash of Equius's unabashed taste. That's a bit of a surprise, but sure. I always thought that they, like, Dirk and Equius had a very similar thing with, like, robotics and whatnot. Martha Stewart would fall to her knees weeping at her defeat, you tell them. Utterly destroyed by the feng shui in my cinder block placement. She'd retire on the spot, you say. And it'd be just like a dragon wanting to retire, man. <laughs> the more you play off his jokes, the more he seems to loosen up for real. So you continue. Much better than a scuba diving trip already. What's down there, anyway? The ruins of 21st century civilization, mostly. Oh shit, yeah, boring as hell. He pauses and tilts his head, considering. I wouldn't call them boring, necessarily. It's more that I find it cosmically frustrating to swim in literally any radical line and find nothing but the wasted l leftovers of a dead city. Aside from being dependent on it as a source of food, the ocean mostly functions for me as a suffocating and inescapable neutral barrier between me and the rest of the human history. It's a constant lapping reminder of my situation, so I'm not often, often hyped to pile on the decibars on. I'm not sure how well my deep personal beef with the imagery of the sea will land for you, but there it is. I think it might not be so offensive to me where the metaphor less blatant. It's embarrassing. Anyway, there's the first of my layers off. Feel fresh. Let's keep going. What else have you got? It's a little unsettling how direct he's being about the friendship building process. But it's not like you haven't been cat cate uh, categorically pushing to achieve that title with literally everyone you have memory of having met. So, fair game. You're sure you can come up with something you've been curious about if he's ready to dive into the deep end and if he'll forgive the continued aquatic figurative language. The love quadrangle? The questionable setting on the robotic gift choice for his would-be part? Uh, Paramore? The differences of opinion on playing the game. He seems to be enjoying the theatrical... Theolac... The... 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 
the mm. theoretically the the showmanship of the friendship metagame dance you're doing so you amp it up for him you clasp your hands behind your back and uh, pace his room as you monologue pausing for effect when the impulse strikes you as you talk you consider which would be the right issue to end on to really zing him into opening up maybe his feelings about his universe is dave or just for fun maybe where the horse stick comes from depending on which you choose you could end up loathe as i am to interpret this ace attorney monologue i wouldn't touch that you look down at where you were about to dramatically place your hand and there's a goddamn sword there haphazardly stored in the hands of some fucking dead-eyed puppet Again, your brain careens down a fleeting pathway, accidentally... Accidental pressure, a clean slice, blood, a lot of it, and... Leave the katanas for the big boys. Although, if you want to touch a weapon, holy shit, do I have an idea. He scoots by you and reaches into the corner of the room, coming up holding a really shitty blue sword. You mean the sword? <laughs> sword is a loose term, though, and honestly, holding is too. An object so shitty you can barely focus on it is sort of clipping through his hands. <laughs> he holds it out as to you as best he can. In the name of the succulent converse of science and horseshit, I need to see what happens when you touch this thing. You reach out and take it from his hands. It steadies under your grasp. Dirk ho hops up onto his workbench to sit and observe, and you slice it through the air a time or two. Absolutely goddamn incredible. Something about your narrative limita liminality and rudimentary form must allow you to actually wield this piece of shit artifact I inherited from my bro. The implications of this are likely jack fucking nothing. But it's still easy the best thing easily the best thing I've ever seen. He's leaning forward laughing, dimples carved into his freckled cheeks. There's a small twist in your heart about it. And you can't place why. You're really just able to hold that fucking thing. He clears his throat and settles down, adjusting his glasses. Thanks for that. Anyway, where were we? Oh right, you were attempting to locate my weak points. Did you want to keep adding to the list? Or zero in on one option? So far, the sword answers are... One, a quadrant of teens with not a lot of choices. What do you expect? Two, call up my autoresponder if you want to, us to hash that one out. And three, it's all under control. You guess it all boils down to the same generic topic, really. His friends. That's where this whole thing always ends up anyway, right? Especially since you're his pathway to being able to hang out with him now. Dirk just... Dirk, Dirk just shrugs. Huh? You have thought he had a stronger opinion about that one. Doesn't he want to hang out with his friends? Doesn't he want to finally meet Jake? He wrinkles his face like... You've shown the, shoved a lemon in his mouth. Come on, dude. You can't just spirit me away to the person I want to see most right off the bat. At least make me try and earn it first. He shifts his weight. The light from the window bounces off the choppy mirror. Uh, or, yeah, choppy mirror of the ocean. It's bright against his back. Does he have to earn it? You mean... Doesn't he think it's been hard enough already? 
His laugh this time is hollow. Is there a cap on that? You're not sure, but your whole existence is a series of cheat codes, so that... What else does he expect from you? You whip the sword around a few times to prove your point, but it kind of makes you dizzy to watch, so you put it back in the corner. And anyways, you know he'll cave at some point. How else is he going to get to see them, now that the game is off? He shrugs again. What? What? He does know they're not playing anymore, right? Like, they're even talking about a larger operation to shut the whole thing down for everyone on the planet. I know they're thinking that's what's happening, but I'm not worried about it. They'll all play when, it's, when the time comes. How in the world does he know that? Last you checked with any of them, they had all moved on. I haven't gotten around to convincing them yet. But I will. It's clear that you've spent a lot of time with them, but they're my friends too. I think I know what they'll do. His dismissiveness is raising your hard-to-raise hackles. That's not really the point, though, you say. Won't trying to get them back on board just amp up the conflict in his friend group? And more importantly, why bother to try making that choice for them? He doesn't even need the game anymore. You can just take him to see them. He can skip the machinations and just like that. Hang out with his friends without having to prove anything to anyone. It's easy. The slight tightening of his brow is the only thing that shows his frustration. The rest of, his, of him is still. The vowels in his drawl and slick are slick and sharp. Black ice on curved country roads. It's not that simple. I know I haven't been talking in a drawl, but I can't see Dirk talking in a drawl a whole lot unless he gets mad, so I'm going to do my best to do that, actually. Do you think I don't want to see him? Do you think I tear off a single page of my sweet bro and Halijeff TM quote a day calendar without thinking about that there's a lot of cards in this and there are a lot of cards and a lot of hands here which I'm not sure you're truly appreciating the importance of I can't just fold mine and hope your shit works out instead Things are in motion. Things have been in motion since before I was born. You can't just stop them without massive fallen, fallout. Yeah, you're not saying you know all the answers, just that you know some of them. And you feel like he could just trust you a little bit. He looks at you like you sl you've slapped him. Trust you? Well, yeah. And there's the key. A weak puff of air leaves his mouth as he shakes his head. This entire morning has been an ex exercise in trust. Has it? Dirk is still for a moment, for a minute. He's probably still staring at you behind those shades. When he speaks again, his voice is steady, but the room is heavy with every ounce of tension he's suppressing. Okay, let's sketch this out. What are the parameters of, of vulnerability that would count if the ones I'm extending don't? You're just... You were just freewheeling there. But you guess you gotta come up with something concrete for him. Uh, okay, how's this? He does all this dangerous scuba diving and sword fighting and rocket boarding shit that could go sideways at any moment, but he wouldn't even let you zap him. There's an example. Okay, yes, that's true. I want to be the only one in charge of endangering my own life. 
you got me. But trust isn't only meaningful if it's given completely, or in terms of physical safety. I've been preparing myself for this, for you, ever since I heard you were making the rounds. I was ready to... He trails off, shaking his head. His wordlessness seems so frustrate, or to frustrate him more than anything you said. And, um, I'm looking at my clock and I think I've been recording for a long time. Uh, and that I haven't gotten any choices. I have a feeling like we're in the end game in this situation. And I don't think I can keep going. I might make another episode, like, right after this, just to see. But... I feel like it's just been going on and on. And I want to end the uh, episode here, actually. One, to be on the safe side. And two, because I think we're getting into something pretty big here. Very big. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to save it here, and I want to thank you guys for watching. I know this has basically just been me talking. There hasn't even been the choices anymore. But I think we're getting to some interesting stuff. And maybe I'm cutting it too soon, but... Things just feel like they're going to a head here, like a big, big head for some reason. So, like I said, I think Dirks might be chopped up maybe slightly shorter, but more episodes, and it's just how things are going to be probably going. But I want to thank you guys for watching. If you liked it, please put a like on the video. If you want to see more of my content, first off, subscribe, and then ring that notification bell so you don't miss anything I upload. And as always, I will see you next time. Have a good day, everybody.